Hi crochet friends, welcome back. I've got a special video for you today where I'm going to teach you how to make baby booties. These are quick projects that are great for taking to baby showers or donating to your local charities. This is a free pattern on my website and the link is in the video description below. So let's get started on our booties, shall we? So here's our baby booties again. These booties start on the bottom with an oval. And there are three rounds on the oval and we're going to do those together. Then the booty continues up with decreases at the front, as you can see here. Then there's this little eyelet round for putting a drawstring in and then some little chain loops as a nice little top edging. So let's look at the pattern and the materials. Here's the pattern, and I've made lots of baby booties in the past with all different colors, so be sure to use whatever colors you want. These booties are going to be three inches long. That's a fairly small size, so I'd say they're pretty much newborn size. If you wanted to make something bigger, you could use a larger hook and thicker yarn. But we'll be using the yarn with the pattern today. This is an easy skill level, and we're going to use sport weight acrylic yarn. This is the yarn that I've chosen for these booties, and you can see it's sport weight because it's number three. You can use any sport weight yarn you like, so don't limit yourself on that. Each pair of booties takes 45 yards of the main color and five yards of the contrasting color for the drawstring. We'll be using a size G hook, which is four millimeters, and this is our gauge. Rounds one through three, which is the bottom, is three inches long and one and a quarter inches wide. I have abbreviations listed here and I've given the instructions for the half double crochet decrease that we'll be doing in these rounds at the toe of the booties. And here's a picture of the booty from the top and the bottom. Here's another picture of the booty from the side. So we can get started on our first booty. Now I'm going to give you a tip here because I've found that if I make the two booties on different days, they may end up being different sizes. So if you want your booties to be the same size for a nice pair, try to crochet them fairly close together on the same day. You don't want to crochet one on a day when you're relaxed and another one on a day when you're stressed because you'll have one big booty and one small booty. So we're going to start with our main color. Now let me scoot this out of the way. We want to leave a nice tail to weave in or to work over. And we'll start with our slip knot as usual. And we're going to chain 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is the center of the sole. Now we're going to work two single crochets in the second chain from the hook. And this is starting the back part of the sole. I always like to go under two strands of the chain, and this yarn does split a little easily, so I want to not split my plies as much as possible. And then we're going to work a single crochet in each of the next seven chains. So we'll work in our next chain and do one single 
and one in each of those seven chains. So here's the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. I'm being careful not to split the plies of yarn because we don't want to do that. Here's the sixth one and the seventh one. Now we're left with our last chain. And whenever you're working an oval, you increase at the ends. If you've never worked an oval before and you want to watch my oval video, I've got a link in the video description below and you can watch that as well. So in this last chain, we're going to work extra stitches. We're going to work five single crochet in this last chain. And that will make our stitches rotate around the toe of the sole. There's two and three, four and five. Now what we're looking at as it's rotated around is the other side of the foundation chains. And I'm going to work over my tail for less ends to weave in. Now we're going to work in these free loops on the opposite side of the chain and we're going to single crochet in the next seven chains. So I have one strand of my chain left to work into. If you have only worked into one strand of your chains when you started this oval, then you'll be working into the other two strands. So, whoops, that's a little bit of a split there, so I want to make that nice and neat. You'll always be working into all three strands of your chain when you do an oval. Whoops, there we go again. Okay, I've got to be very careful. And I've got one more left. And let's double check that that's seven. Here was the five here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the pattern says after those seven single crochets, we single crochet in the same chain as the first two. Here's the chain that we worked the first two single crochet into, and we'll work one more there. So we have a total of three at this end and five at that end. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. This is the chain we skipped when we started our round, and we're going to work under both loops of the single crochet to do our slip stitch. And there we go. And I like to tighten that slip stitch so I don't work into it by mistake when I come back around. Now let's count the stitches on this first round. We want to have 22 single crochet. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And there's my slip stitch. So we're ready for round two. I would suggest counting your stitches at the end of every round to make sure you have the correct number. Round two starts with chain one and two single crochet in the same single crochet as joining. And this is where I joined with the slip stitch so I'm going to do my first two single crochet in that stitch. Now we work a single crochet in the next eight single crochet. So we are working even along the sides and we are increasing at both ends. And that's what we always do in ovals. So let's count these single crochet to make sure there's eight. We have the first two 
and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to work increases. So we're going to do two single crochet in the next single crochet and one single crochet in the next single crochet. And we're going to do these three stitches three times. So we'll do our two single crochet in the next single crochet. And that's an increase, of course, and one in the next. So two stitches turns into three stitches. We have one more increase, two single crochet in the next single crochet, and one single crochet in the next single crochet. And after that, we're going to single crochet in the next seven single crochets. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the pattern says single crochet in same single crochet as joining. And this is oh, right over here. This was my slip stitch and my chain one. And this is where I worked my first two single crochets and my joining. So there's one more single crochet in there for a total of three. And we will join as before, which means to join with the slip stitch in the first single crochet. So we want to make sure that we're not splitting any plies of our yarn when we do all of our stitches. Now there should be 27 single crochet in this round and I'm not going to count them. If I run out of stitches when I do the next round, I'll know that I had a mistake in this round and I'll go back. So round three starts with chain one and two single crochet in the same single crochet as the joining. So that first single crochet is where we place those two. And then we're going to single crochet in the next 10 stitches. So in each round, we have more stitches on the side in our straight section before the extra stitches at the ends. And we're going to have to count these to make sure there's 10. If I was crocheting these by myself, I would be counting them as I'm crocheting them. Okay, let's see how many we've got. We have our first two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got the 10, and now I'm ready for the increase at the toe portion of the sole. So the, we're going to work two single crochet in the next single crochet and single crochet in the next single crochet three times. This is the same type of increase as round two, but it's placed a little bit further over because we have more stitches on the sides. So there's one repeat and two repeats and we need third time. Whenever the pattern has information in the brackets and it says three times after that, it means to work whatever's in the brackets three times. So there's the third time and now we're going to do a single crochet in the next 10 single crochet. So we've got the same number of single crochet on each side of the booty with the increases at each end and our toe, toe increases are a little bit more than the heel increases just because the shape of our feet. So we need a wider toe than we need a heel. I think I have one more to go, but let's look and count. We have our increase here of two and one. So that was the last increase of the instructions where we did our increases three times. So that's two and one. Then we start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm correct, I need one more. And this was my last stitch. So there's my 10. 
and then we're going to do the same thing we did in the last round, single crochet and same single crochet as joining. So this is our two single crochets and where we joined and we will single crochet there. That's our last single crochet of our three. We started with two and end with one. So we have three at this end and now we will join the same way as before with a slip stitch in that first single crochet, being careful not to split the plies of our yarn. And that is the sole finished. Then we will be starting the sides next. So we've got our sole finished and we're ready for the sides now. So to start the side, which is going to be round four, because we've done three rounds now, we're going to chain one and single crochet in the back loop of the same single crochet as joining. So we're only going in the back loop now. That's going to form this little ridge right here and it helps the booty just kind of fold up a little bit. So there's the same single crochet as joining and single crochet in back loop of each single crochet around. So that's what I'm going to do and I will meet you when I get to the end of this round when I've done my single crochet in each back loop. Here I am at the end of this round and I worked my last single crochet in the back loop of that last single crochet and I'm going to join with a slip stitch in both loops of the first single crochet. And that's that first round. Now there should be 32 single crochet in here and we will be ready to start round five. Now if any time you want to pause this video and do some of the round with me, you can do that. If you want to speed up the video, you can also do that or slow it down. And I've got some timestamps in the video description below. So if you want to skip to another spot in the booty, you can do that as well. All right, so round five starts with a chain one and single crochet in the same single crochet as joining. Whoops, I've got a little extra strand in there I could feel. There we go. And in each single crochet around. So this one is also single crochets, but it's in both loops. So I will work this around and meet you when I get to the end of this round as well. Here I've gotten to the end of round five and I'm ready for my slip stitch, which will be in the first single crochet, just like before. And now we're ready for round six. We should still have 32 stitches in round five. So make sure that you have that. Round six starts with the chain one and single crochet in same single crochet as joining and in next 12. This is going to bring us to where we're going to do our first round of decreases at the toe section. So we want to make sure that we're in the right place for doing those decreases. And I'm going to teach you how to do the half double crochet decrease that we use in these booties. If you've never done it before, it's not that difficult. You just need to learn to do it. So let's count these because I've lost track. This is my first one and then I need 12 more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've got one more to do. And I like to put my hook in this way with the leading edge at the front. So I've got one more single crochet. Now we're going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to do a half double, do excuse me, a half double crochet decrease in the next two stitches three times. So we're going to be decreasing three stitches. So the half double crochet decreases yarn over the same way we do when we start a half double crochet. 
insert the hook in the next stitch and draw up a loop. Then we stop there and we're going to go to the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over again, insert the hook in the next stitch and draw up a loop. Now we have five loops on the hook and we'll yarn over and pull through all five loops. That's one decrease. So we're going to go to the next single crochet and start our next half double crochet decrease. And then go to the next single crochet and we've got our five loops on the hook again. Yarn over, oops, don't split the yarn, and pull through all five loops. Sometimes you've got to wiggle that hook around to get it through. So we've just worked in this one. Now we've got our next decrease, our third decrease. And we've got our five loops. Yarn over and pull through all five loops. And after those three decreases, we have one more half double crochet. Then we're going to do a single, a single crochet in the last 11 single crochet. So I will meet you when I get to the end of this round. So here I am at the end of round six, and I'm ready to do my slip stitch in the first single crochet to finish off that round. Now this round had decreases, so it's on, only going to have 29 stitches. So make sure you count your stitches before you go to the next round. Round seven starts with a chain one again, a single crochet in the same single crochet as joining, and in next 11 single crochet. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got one, two, no splitting yarn, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we're ready for our decreases. We're not going to do a half double crochet here like we did in the last round. We're just going to go right into the decreases. So we have three half double crochet decreases. We'll do our yarn over again and insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert our hook in the next stitch or the following stitch, pull up a loop and we've got five and we're going to draw through all of those. So that's one decrease. Here's two decreases and three decreases. With these decreases, you want to try to keep them tight. You don't want them getting loose or you'll have big holes in your work. And the stitch after your last decrease, which is going to be a single crochet, you also want to keep that tight. You don't want this loop on the hook getting loose or your next stitch will be loose. So after those decreases, we work a single crochet in the last 11 single crochet. So I'll meet you at the end of this. Okay, I've gotten to the end of round seven and I'm going to join with a slip stitch, the same as before. Now I'm going to work rounds eight and nine by myself, but let me tell you what is in there because this is just the same as we've just been doing, but the numbers are different. So round eight, it starts with a chain one and single crochet in the same single crochet as joining and in next 10 single crochet. Then there's the half double crochet decrease in the next two stitches three times. Then single crochet in last nine single crochet and join and then you should have 23 stitches. Round nine starts the exact same way, but there's less single crochet on each side. So you work in the same single crochet as joining and the next eight, then you do those three decreases again, and then single crochet in the last eight and join, and then you'll have 20 stitches. So I'll meet you again when I finish rounds eight and nine, and you can pause the video 
and work those two rounds with me and then we'll start back up on round 10. Okay, I'm finished with round nine and I've joined with my slip stitch. Now there should be 20 stitches in round nine, so go ahead and count those. And we're ready to start round 10. And round 10 says repeat round five. Round five was chain one, single crochet, and same single crochet as joining, and in each stitch around. So let's start our chain one and single crochet in each stitch around, and I will meet you when I get to the end of this round. All right, I've finished round 10 and I've joined with a slip stitch, and I thought we would just take a quick look at the booty so far. We've got our sole, and we've got all the decreases here where the toe goes. And we are ready to start round 11. So, round 11 is a little different now. We're going to start with three chains. And these three chains count as a half double crochet for the first two and a chain one space for the third one. Now we're going to skip the next single crochet because we already joined in this first one. So we skip this one and we're going to work a half double crochet in the next one after that. And we're going to chain one. And this is our repeat around this round. Skip one, half double crochet in the next one, chain one. So I'll finish this around and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Okay, I've gotten to the end of round 11 and I'm ready for the join. Now this join is join with slip stitch in second chain of beginning chain three. Here's our three chains and this is my second one. And I'm going to insert my hook under two strands, those top two strands. One is on top and one is in back. And I want to make sure I haven't split my yarn when I do my slip stitch. And there's the slip stitch. Now as you can see, these are the holes that we're going to insert our drawstring into. And the drawstring is to help the booty stay on the baby, because without the drawstring they slip off a lot easier. Now we're ready for round 12. So that starts with chain one, single crochet in the same chain as joining, so right here. Single crochet in next chain one space, and the space is just the hole here below it. It's not in the chain, but in the space below. And then we're going to single crochet in the next half double crochet. This is the chain after the half double crochet, and this is actually the top of the half double crochet. Half double crochets happen to kind of have that leaning quality to them. The top is not really on top, but to the side. So there I've not split my yarn, and I'm gonna do my single crochet in that stitch. Then we will single crochet in the next chain one space, and we're going to continue that around doing a single crochet in the next half double crochet and a single crochet in the next chain one space. And I will meet you when I get to the end of this round. Here I am at the end of round 12 and I've done my single crochets around. I have 20 single crochet in this round, which is what the pattern calls for. And I'm ready to join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. Now we're ready for round 13, and this is going to start the chain loops here, which gives our booties a nice little frilly edge on top. So we'll start with chain one, single crochet in the same single crochet as joining. Now we'll start our chain spaces. We have three chains, so chain three. Skip the next single crochet and single crochet in the next single crochet. And this is our repeat around. It's chain three, 
skip the next single crochet, single crochet in the next. So I will work this round with the chain threes and the single crochets, and I will meet you when I get to the end of this round. Here I am at the end of round 13, and I'm ready for my last chain three space. But this is worked differently because we want to be in the middle of the chain space when we start round 14. So this is a little trick I learned from crocheting doilies for so many years. Instead of chain three, we're going to do chain one, and then we're going to half double crochet in the first single crochet. And this chain one and half double crochet counts as the last chain three space because a half double crochet typically counts as two chains. So add the other chain and it's three chains. We have 10 chain three spaces and 10 single crochets. So we're ready to start round 14. It starts with chain one and then single crochet around the post of the joining half double crochet. So we're just going in this space and this goes around the post, which is the section of the stitch below the top. And there's our first single crochet. Now we're going to chain four. We want a little bit more chains on this round. And we're going to single crochet in the next chain three space. Whoops, I'm having a little trouble here. Okay single crochet in that chain three space. Now we're going to repeat that around four chains and single crochet in the next chain three space. So I will meet you when I get to the end of this round. All right, I'm at the end of round 14 and I'm ready for my ending chain four and join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. And then we're going to finish off because this booty is done. I would recommend crocheting that second booty very soon after you've finished your first booty so that they're the same size. Now you're going to want to weave in your ends and typically I'll weave in my end down to here where I've got some single crochets and I'll go across the single crochets because these chain spaces don't give you enough space to weave in your ends securely. And I would typically turn this wrong side out and also weave this tail. I've already gone under here when I've worked over it, but I would weave it under the other side as well. And that just makes it a little bit stronger. So here is a finished booty, and all it's lacking is the drawstring. Now you can make your drawstring with any color you want. You can use a contrasting color or the same color. And I've used a contrasting color on mine, and I've already done my drawstring. And the drawstring is made with 60 chains or approximately 13 inches in length. If your chains are larger or smaller than mine, I would go with the measurement over the number of chains. And we're going to weave our drawstring into the chain spaces on round 11. But to help us weave it through, we're going to thread either end of that drawstring through our tapestry needle. So we're going to look at our baby booty and see which one of these half double crochets looks like it's more in the center. I'm going to go with this one. So I will start on this side of it, weaving in and out of those chain spaces. And we don't want to pull it all the way through. We just want it part way through. And we continue that all the way to the beginning or the front of our booty. And then we can remove our tapestry needle. 
Now you'll probably find that one end is a little longer than the other, so go ahead and adjust those a little bit till you have them even. And you'll want to tie your booty in a bow. So however you typically tie your bow is fine. I'll go this way and tie it in a bow. And then after my ends are woven in, of course, it'll look much prettier and we'll fold this little brim down. Or if you prefer the brim up, you can leave the brim up. And there's a couple ways that you could finish off the ends on your drawstring. You can cut it off close to the end and apply some fabric glue or you can use your tapestry needle and weave it in the end on your chains. And this is what I typically do. Um, I think it makes it stronger and I go with the natural edge of the chains. The chains are going in this direction, so I go in that same direction. Chains don't give you much space for weaving in, like stitches do, but we can weave it up there and adjust it a little because it can get tight. And then we can weave it through to the other side of the chain and weave it back down the other side of the chain going with that chain. Okay, you don't want to go the opposite way. You want it to be as invisible as possible. So I go all the way to the end and pull it through. And it might need a little adjusting and then I can trim it off there. And I would do that with the other end of the drawstring. And then your baby booties will be all finished. And don't they look cute? I just love these little baby booties. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've been able to crochet some baby booties for yourself or to give us a gift. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please let me know. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching and happy crocheting to you. I'd love to hear from you and find out <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Here, let me sit there. Let me see how hard it is. Yeah, the guy who likes to do plays and stuff. Okay. All right. Can I record you? Or yeah, it's a recording right now. It's still recording. Yeah. Okay, let's see. <laughs> it's too hot in these lights. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> let me drink of water. Mm. <laughs> Uh, hi, let's see here. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on making baby booties. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And please, and please, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on making baby booties. I've really enjoyed making them and I hope you do too. They're great gifts and you should. <laughs> it's so really easy, isn't it? Hi there. No, I don't need to say hi. Thanks for watching this baby booties video tutorial. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so thanks for watching this tutorial on. No, I hope this video has been informative and instructive to you <laughs> in making the video or making the baby buddies. <laughs> so that's it. It's easy. Just get in there and do it, and it should be a piece of cake. You've got the information now. And uh, just follow along and you shouldn't have any problems. If you do, leave a comment and question down below and we'll see you next time.